Hi, Donna Guest here, Creative Memories Advisor and Lazy Scrapbooker. It's been a while since my last video. I hope you've had a great summer. I've been super busy hosting live customer events here in Georgia. And running at the same time as the Summer Olympics in Tokyo, I've been hosting my own Scrap Olympics on my Facebook page. One of the challenges I gave the participants was called Fun with Your Custom Cutting System. I challenged them to create something original using their custom cutting system that they could include in their scrapbook. This camper, created by my customer Lynn Washer using her custom cutting system, was so cute, another scrapbooker said it was the equivalent of a mic drop. Now I'll show you what you need and how to create this adorable camper created by Lynn. First, your 12 inch trimmer. I'm going to be using the straight blade and also the scoring blade. Next, from the custom cutting system, you'll need the rectangle patterns. We're specifically going to use the two rectangle pieces and not the square. Also, we'll need the ovals from the custom cutting system, specifically the largest oval and the next to the smallest. I've had these for over 20 years, and you'll see when I first started, I put stickers, one on the template and then one on the piece itself, so that I could match them up when it was a little bit more confusing at first. Now, I don't really need the stickers, but I just kept them on there. And from the custom cutting system circle patterns, we'll need the smallest circle. You'll of course need a cutting mat to work on, and from the custom cutting system, we'll need two of the blades, the red blade and the blue blade. We're of course going to need tape runner. I'm going to use all three of these, my regular, my repositionable with the green cartridge, and in the red cartridge, the mini tape runner. If you don't have them all, it will be okay, but if you do have all those on hand, I definitely encourage you to use them as it will make putting this together a lot easier. We'll of course need scissors. You always need scissors. And then if you have it, the Creative Memories Campfire Punch. If you don't have it, it's okay. But Lynn had the great idea to use this little leftover piece that you, that's inside the wood as the door handle. If you don't have it, it's okay. You can cut something that will work. Now it's time to select your papers. As you can see, I have a small photo here on the table of the camper that Lynn created so that I can use that as a guide. While she's stuck with neutral tones to go with her page, I'm going to kind of create a retro camper with this bright blue. So I'm using for the top portion, aqua, and for the bottom portion, charcoal, both from Creative Memories. Then for the tire and wheel, we need a little bit of black and white. So I have very little black, which will be enough for that tire and for those pieces right there. And then I'm using some beige or cream colored cardstock that I had on hand for the door and window. And now we're ready. First, we're going to make the top portion of the camper and I'm going to use the aqua blue for that. We're going to use the largest oval and we're going to use the red blade. As you probably know, each template piece has two tracks to give you a wider variety of oval sizes. So we're going to be using the red on the outside track for a big piece. And if you haven't, yet purchased the rotating blades. They've been out for several years now. It is definitely worth an upgrade because you don't have to move your hands as much. So I'm right-handed, so I'm going to be holding firmly, pressing down with my left hand on the template as I begin cutting the oval. Okay, before I move my left hand, I always want to make sure, oops, I didn't quite cut it far enough. So if you feel the paper not pulling up, you want to go down and cut that again. There we go. Now I've got a perfect oval. Now we're ready to make the bottom portion of our camper. And for that, I've chosen charcoal. We're going to use the largest rectangle, and here is where it sits, right above the square. So it's the bigger one of those. And we're going to use the blue blade. And again, we're going to use the outside track to make a large shape. Oh, and I can see my, um, <laughs> I'm moving my mat, but I'm not moving my hand from this rectangle. I'm not letting go. I think I need to do it a little bit more over here. Ah, perfect. Okay, now for the next step, we're going to attach our bottom part to our top part of the camper. But as you can see, I can't just do it like that because this rectangle has those rounded corners. So we need a straight edge. Now, I could just take my trimmer and cut it, but I'm going to go with Lynn's advice. She actually folded her bottom piece to add a little dimension to the camper. So I think that's a great idea. Let's do that. Now, I could fold it by hand, but this is pretty thick cardstock that I chose to use, so it doesn't always leave a very pretty fold when I do that. 
So I'm going to use the scoring blade from my Creative Memories 12 inch trimmer. If you'd like a little bit more guidance on the trimmer, I'm going to throw up a link in the top right hand corner to my video about the trimmer, the 20 greatest things about your Creative Memories trimmer. You'll learn lots of new tips there. So first of all, to fold this in half, I need to know how wide it is. So I'm just going to use this as a ruler starting at my cutting line and it's just a tad over four and a half inches. So I'm going to take this a teeny weeny bit past two and a quarter inches, just a little, making sure it is straight up here at the top. I don't want to tilt it or I'll cut an angle into it. Well, I'm not going to be cutting it. I'm going to be scoring it. So I'm going to give it a light score and all that does, if I do it too much, I'll actually cut it in half, but it allows me to have a perfect fold, just like you're making a card. So even if you're not really a card maker and don't make a lot of those or any of those, the scoring blade can really be great to have on hand. I'm going to go ahead and put my straight blade back in here so that I don't accidentally score something later when I'm supposed to be trimming it. So now we're going to get the added dimension with this, but I do want to attach these pieces. So I'm going to add some tape runner down here at the bottom just to attach that together. And now we can put our camper together. So we want it, Lynn did a great job here of making it look like a very straight line starting with the oval. So you kind of have to find that perfect spot there, which seems to be at the bottom of the oval. So maybe it's easier to attach it this way. Let's see. Am I the only person that flips over cardstock to go on the other side, even though it's the same? I do that every time. Okay, let's see. I should, probably should have used repositionable in case I didn't like what I did, but I think I do like what I did. There we go. Okay, our next step, we're going to make the tire and the wheel for the camper. So to do this, we're going to need our black and our white pieces of cardstock and the smallest circle from the custom cutting system templates. We're going to use both the red and the blue blade. I probably should have left these open to use again, but I'm so accustomed to closing them to keep them safe so that no one gets cut. All right, now let's make the tire first in black. Very small circle here. And as you know, or can see, the difference between the distance of the prongs and the blades on these two blades is what makes different size circles. So it's closer on the red. So we're going to use the red. And if you didn't know that, you can always look at these wonderful little templates. As you can see here, the red is larger and the blue is smaller. And that's what we're about to do there. So let's do the red first. So cutting out the black tire on the red. And if you're following along, we'll make it even easier. And then we're going to get our white and we're gonna make the smallest circle possible using the custom cutting system. The blue blade inside the smallest circle. It is teeny. Look how tiny that is. All right, so I'm gonna use my tape runner and attach that to my tire. So cute. And let's go ahead and put that on the camper. All right, so I'm gonna do it just up at the top here. Now, Lynn, when she assembled hers, I believe she was already on this beautiful piece of paper that had the road and the clouds in the background. I'm just going to put this camper together as is and then use it later. So that looks good right there. Oh, it's really coming together. Okay, next, let's make the window. And for this, we're going to use that second smallest oval with the red blade on the inside track. So for this, I chose cream paper so it wouldn't be stark white. I noticed Lynn had a different color for that as well. So I wanted to kind of do the same thing she was doing since it looks so great. Oh, perfect. Okay, now we can attach our window. And I like this color, this looks good. So it's kind of over back here above the tire. Cute. And I can see I might need a little more adhesive back here. There we go. Next, we're going to make the door. And for this, we're going to use our cream cardstock again. You're gonna use the small rectangle on those templates. It's the one to the left here of the square. Not the one we use for the bottom here, but the smaller one. And we're going to use the blue blade and we're going to go on the inside track to make a really small door here. When I first saw the picture of Lynn's, her camper looked gigantic. I really wasn't considering how big the page was. It was just so big and adorable. I just loved it. So I've been surprised as I was creating this um, and she shared with me the tools that she used. 
how small some of these pieces are. Which I like. I was glad to see that because the smaller your embellishment is, the more title, letters, or photos that you can get on your page. Oh, I didn't think that was fully cut, but it was. Okay, so now let's attach our door. It's really coming together. Okay, now for the most clever piece that she put on here. I swear, it's so creative. She took the campfire punch, and I'm going to punch that just on some scrap paper. Okay, look, here's our campfire that I would normally do in orange and brown. We're not going to use those pieces. What we are going to use is the part that just fell out of the logs here, because you'll notice it's like two little sticks on top of each other. It looks like a door handle. So I thought that was so clever of her to notice that. Okay, so I'm going to use my repositionable tape runner on this to get enough adhesive on what is such a tiny little piece of paper. And let's attach that door handle. Oh my goodness, that's so cute. Okay, now for the last piece and what I think looks so very realistic that she's created here the little piece of the trailer that you would attach to the vehicle to pull it behind that. So I'm going to use this tiny little scrap of black cardstock. And here's what we need. We're going to need an eighth of an inch to make these little strips here and then a quarter inch to make that. Those dimensions look pretty good. So let me show you up close. When measuring, here's my cutting line with the two above. For an eighth of an inch, I just need to line my paper up on this cutting line to the right there. That's the one with the one on it down here that I'm not currently using. To make a quarter inch, I'm going to line my paper all the way over here at the edge of this gray mat, the trimmer mat, that replacement mat. And from the looks of this, I'm going to need to be flipping that to number three soon. So let's start off with some eighth inch cuts. I'm just gonna do two and that will be plenty. Okay, and now let's do one more to give us a fourth. I'm really making the most of this scrap of paper. Okay, this is plenty, more than enough than we'll need. So we're going to craft this little piece that she did there. So let's see, this one looks good. I'm going to cut about just a little much so that I can attach it on in the back there. There we go, and then there seems to be this little post right here. And I'm going to use the mini tape runner for this to attach this. And again, um, Lynn did it the smart way of doing this directly on her page, but I'm not sure what page this is going to go on yet. And I, I want to use this because it is so cute. Although I don't camp, so I got to be creative with where I'm going to use this. I did camp once about 19 years ago in a tent, and that was my last time camping. Okay, so I've recreated that, and now for the very realistic looking piece, that little bar that goes at a diagonal. So I'm just putting a little bit of tape runner here on the edge, and again, if you wanna create this um, directly on your page, I encourage you to do so, because it will be a little easier. Okay. And now I'll attach it back here. So I'm just going to put the mini tape runner on the front. And again, if you've never seen the mini tape runner, you don't have it. You can just buy a cartridge and it works in any case. I just have a separate case for mine since I use it so much, but it attaches just, or it adheres just a small amount of tape. So let's make this look good. I'm trying to do it exactly like hers, but close enough. Okay. I love it. I think we're done. I think this turned out so great. It looks adorable. I love the design Lynn created. And as you can see, it's very simple. You just need to have the tools on hand that you probably have already if you were a lover of the custom cutting system. So I can't wait to hear how you like this creation. Thanks so much for watching. I hope that was a lot of fun. If you want to see more of the creations, check out my Scrap Olympics on my Facebook page. It's called Creative Memories with Donna Guest. And if you see this early enough and it's not yet August the 8th of 2021, why don't you go in there and be a participant yourself? Check out the latest challenge. Thank you for being a subscriber to my channel. If you haven't yet subscribed, I'd love for you to click like or subscribe to the channel so that you'll see all future videos. Thanks a lot and I'll see you next time.